Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this very first meeting of the Connected Fleets Expert Day. So we have our first Connected Fleets Expert meeting um, following, of course, the Connected Fleets Conference that we organized at the end of March. Um, we see, of course, since many years that there is an increased attention for technology in our fleet and mobility ecosystem. And that's also why we at Fleet Europe are increasing our efforts to deliver information and expertise around technology and more particular connected technology for your vehicle fleet operations. This is the first expert meeting that we organize later on in the year in the second semester there will be a second one of course and we have chosen a particular topic for this first expert meeting based on several feedback that we received both from the supplier side and the customer side and so we choose the topic of predictive data and this to enhance your fleet efficiency and to make your fleet operations more seamless Today, we have two hours in front of us with several experts, also discussions. And if we look a little bit uh, into the agenda, uh, then we see, of course, that we have several topics. And the first one, after my short introduction, will be an overarching presentation about data-driven decision-making in fleet management done by the consultancy firm Ptolemus. After that, we have a thought leadership presentation of Ubench. Uh, their CEO, Manuel Medinger, he will talk about the digitalizing the driver journey and optimizing the customer experience. And he will show how you can do that in an easy way. After that, at 2.45, we have a panel discussion with uh, Hurtam and Renta Solutions about securing the right data for fleet efficiency. And then we continue with a second thought leadership presentation delivered by Bart Dupré of Sofico. He will talk about unveiling the power of data insights, how fleet managers can benefit from insights generated by leasing companies. And we end this first Connected Fleets expert meeting with a dual presentation of Targa Telematics and Ford. And they will talk about the differences between OEM embedded telematics versus third party telematics. What will be your role? It's not only to be passive and to listen to what is said. You can also give your comments and ask your questions. And you can do that via the chat function in this tool. And after each presentation, each panel discussion, we will have some time to take questions from the audience. So if you have a question, please be engaged and submit your question via the tool. Before that I introduce the first speaker, I would like to thank also our partners and sponsors for this first uh, meeting. You see on the screen that we have two diamond partners, Sofico and Ubench. Thank you very much for your support. And we also have two platinum sponsors, Renta Solutions and Wylan from Gurtam. Also, thank you for your support. Then the, uh, immediately presenting the first presenter. That was not the best English. So I already told you that we will kick off with the presentation of Ptolemus Consulting Group. We have with us today, Paul Maupin, and he is the marketing director, and he will shed light about the uh, evolving connected fleet ecosystem. And more precisely, he will give some insights in terms of data-driven decision-making in vehicle fleet management. I see that Paul is connected, but we can't see him on the screen. Paul, can you hear me or can you see me? Because we know that you are in the tool. My colleague Benedictus trying to whisper something in my ear.
So apparently Paul has a problem in terms of connecting. Please stay with us. He will connect again in a few seconds. And there he is. Hello, Paul. How are you doing? Hello. Pretty good. Having a, a few connectivity issues. So uh... that's that's a risk if we work with technology. Hopefully you can shed light on connected technology. I don't know if also there sometimes there can be connectivity problems. Um, you know it better than I do. Uh, Paul, thank you very much. Thank you for joining this first Connected Fleets expert meeting. So you will kick off. You will shed light about um, the evolving connected technology ecosystem. And more particular, you will deep dive into uh, data-driven decision-making and uh, what you see as some of the most important trends around this topic. Um, you have prepared a presentation, so um, we can already see uh, it on the screen, I think. No? Okay. You tell me. I'm looking at it now, but I can't see yes. your screen. <laughs> so he needs to share that. So you need to share your presentation. Ah, uh, yes, because I got disconnected. Yeah. Apologies. Exactly. I got to reshare. Okay. It's a difficult start, ladies and gentlemen, but you will see that later on everything will go fluently and seamlessly. Paul, there we see your first slide, data-driven decision-making and fleet management. Thank you very much, and the floor is yours. Excellent. All right. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, yes, so I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into uh, the data-driven decision-making and fleet management. Uh, how we're deriving that data, who is supplying it, and how it can be used, as well as uh, what the trends are moving forward. Uh, so I'll start by introducing myself and uh, Tolemus Consulting Group. I'll quickly show you the basis of the presentation today. Uh, then we'll dig into today's connected fleet ecosystem, uh, the OEM embedded versus third-party telematics solutions, and tomorrow's connected fleet ecosystem. So a little bit about Ptolemus uh, and myself. First off, I'm again, Paul Maupin. I'm the marketing director here at Ptolemus Consulting Group. And uh, Ptolemus is the first strategy consulting and research firm entirely focused on the geo-connected mobility and uh, automation, automation ecosystem. Uh, we provide strategy consulting services such as strategy definition, project management, business development, and procurement. Uh, we also produce market research services so we create off-the-shelf reports, uh, two to three per year. We also offer subscription services for those uh, off-the-shelf reports, and we create custom market research. And we do so in various fields of expertise, such as mobility services, vehicle services, uh, usage-based charging, vehicle data analytics, automation, and the enabling technologies behind all of these. Now into the basis of our presentation today. Uh, the, the content that I'll be presenting today comes from two of our recent reports on fleets, our commercial fleet telematics global study, uh, which dives deeply into the commercial fleet telematics ecosystem, both the on-road and what we call off-road or commercial uh, uh, industrial sector. And that, that was released just over a year ago, about 18 months ago, in fact. Uh, and then our fleet electrification global study, which we released in January of this year, which uh, obviously goes into fleet electrification, uh, when fleets are optimally, uh, when is the optimal time for a fleet to move over to uh, an electrified fleet and uh, all the total costs, uh, implications that go along with that. Okay, so on to the presentation, we're going to start with today's connected fleet ecosystem. Well, first, we'll take a, a quick step back to see how we got here. So uh, fleet telematics, which was introduced really in 1996, has radically evolved over the last two decades into data-driven services. So telematics really started with GPS satellite data uh, long ago, and then moved into the first web-based uh, fleet management software. 
Uh, as time progressed, we've seen solutions and the offerings increase as well as uh, increased technologies, enabling technologies. So smartphone-based telematics solutions launched in the early 2010s. Uh, IoT and M2M-based telematics capabilities emerged there as well. Uh, then as we got into the mid-2010s, we see open data platform application program interfacing become common practice. Uh, OEMs starting to enable embedded vehicle telematics devices. And as we move later into the 2010s, we see AI and machine learning emerge in fleet telematics, uh, something that we'll dive quite a bit deeper into later in this presentation, which has yet to be fully fleshed out. And uh, telematic solutions for conversion to electric feats were also launched in the late 2010s. Uh, and as you can see, we have a future looking statement here where we see the era of autonomous trucks really starting to uh, dominate fleets uh, from 2025 on. That may be a, uh, a little optimistic, but uh, we'll see about that. The technology is still on its way. Uh, so yes, as as many industries, fleet management has been revolutionized by connectivity, geolocation, and data-driven concepts. So what we see is the traditional services uh, turning into connected and individualized services. Maintenance has become remote diagnostics. Uh, insurance has become connected. Roadside assistance is connected as well via B-call and E-call. Uh, fleet management has really become fleet telematics. Uh, navigation is connected, as we all know, as well as infotainment. And even in terms of tolling and parking, we've seen smart and electronic solutions emerge. So the telematics market, it's led by two major groups of players, uh, what we call dedicated providers and secondary providers. Dedicated telematics providers include companies offering telematics services and or FMS as the main asset in the value prop. And secondary telematics providers, the big example being OEMs, include telematics as an additional service in their value prop. Uh, so as we see here included outside of the OEMs, we see full service TSPs, software TSPs, software platform providers, uh, also rental and leasing companies and value added providers all in this space. Uh, but the two main players that we're going to focus on today are the full service TSPs, and OEMs. So on to OEM embedded versus third-party telematics. So we have assessed a number of uh, TSPs, 14 in total, and we've put together this chart of the coverage by TSPs um, uh, separated by category. Uh, so what we see here is visibility, is the category that telematic, service, uh, telematic services that are provided by most TSPs, uh, followed by ease of use, uh, pr productivity and efficiency, safety and risk management, and as uh, the smallest percentage, administration and compliance. Uh, so what we've seen is uh, things such as geofencing and routing because they're essential for fleet management operators to track vehicles and know their position at any time. Uh, this is something that's offered by all the TSPs that we've looked at. Uh, safety and risk management services provided by all the TSPs uh, tend to be related to driver behavior. So that includes driver scoring, coaching, and training. Uh, this, the particular attention here to drivers demonstrates how fleet managers are interested to reduce risk management and TCO by monitoring and improving the driving style of the vehicle. Uh, as well, thanks to CAN bus connectivity, all TSPs can now provide remote diagnostic services, though very few have developed predictive maintenance. Uh, this is going to be a key point throughout the presentation. Predictive maintenance has been presented by several TSPs as the future of telematics maintenance, but for the moment, none that we researched is offering this service. It's still a future looking uh, service by TSPs. And to break that down, as we look through the list, uh, there are a lot of commonalities here. I won't go through every uh, service offered by all of these providers, obviously, but the really clear gap that we see is that none of them offer predictive maintenance and only some of them even offer prescriptive maintenance, prescriptive being sort of a precursor to predictive maintenance. 
On the contrary, when we talk about OEMs, uh, we see that OEMs offer relatively few services with little differentiation from each other, but there is a focus on predictive maintenance that we don't see from TSPs. So OEMs, they tend to offer solutions related to vehicle productivity and efficiency. Uh, so their main focus is on maintenance and diagnostics. And that's of course, because they're directly involved in the manufacturing of the vehicles. Uh, these are, this is a service that would be more expected from an OEM than necessarily a TSP. Uh, so what we see is that, that many are developing preliminary predictive maintenance services, and uh, none of which are offered by TSPs as discussed. So the rationale for this being that providing diagnostic and maintenance services, OEMs are able to channel customers to their in-house maintenance teams, thus generating additional revenue for after sales. It also enables the OEMs to better manage the end customer relationship and safeguard customer satisfaction and customer retention. As well, safety and risk management services provided by the OEMs are mainly focused on the driver, just as we saw with TSPs. So almost all of the vehicle manufacturers have implemented driver and coaching training services, but only a few of them have developed on uh, roadside and claims adjustment uh, assistance solutions. Not one of them is offering FNOL or UBI services. So as we see here, going through a, a very similar list, OEMs really differentiate themselves right now from TSPs in the offering of predictive maintenance. Uh, it is offered as a stark contrast to TSPs. All of the OEMs that we investigated are offering some form of predictive maintenance already. Uh, so there's a clear, clear uh, differentiation between TSPs and OEMs in this state. And uh, as we move into tomorrow's landscape, we'll see that this can be a major factor for uh, TSPs to retain their market share and sort of push back against the OEM telematics offerings on the market today. All right, and now we'll move into tomorrow's connected fleet ecosystem. What we see over time is that telematic services have constantly been upgraded uh, based on the needs of the market. Uh, following Maslow's pyramid here in the evolution of the supply of fleet telematic services, we see that location came first, uh, followed by geofencing, roadside assistance, remote diagnostics. Uh, and we continue to see increased offerings as the demand increases, as well as the technology around it. So as we see future supply here, we expect that there will be, of course, uh, a big move towards fleet electrification. Uh, we see that autonomous truck services will be a major offering in the near future. And as well, the use of artificial intelligence in telematics data uh, will be a, a major change in the market moving forward. Of course, AI is, is currently in use but uh, only in, in certain fields and not to its full extent. Uh, I mean, as we see even in uh, normal day-to-day -day life, AI has become uh, sort of ubiquitous already within our lives, even though we've really, with the release of ChatGPT just uh, this year or last year, this was something that was almost completely strange to the individual other than hearing the term. And now it's something that affects our everyday lives we expect that to be more and more a part of the fleet manager's life as well, moving forward. So where do we see the, the future moving? Well, to go back to the topic, we see OEMs and dealers are pursuing predictive maintenance solutions in order to optimize product uptime. Uh, so their big focus here moving forward, as we've seen is predictive maintenance. So predictive maintenance, unlike preventative or scheduled maintenance, uses data analysis to forecast when a vehicle will need maintenance and anticipate component failure. This obviously reduces downtime significantly and also extends the lifetime of the vehicle in many instances. So predictive maintenance, uh, for those of you who are not too familiar, it relies on analysis of data transmitted from vehicle sensors connected to pretty much any mechanical component on the vehicle. Uh, this predictive maintenance analyzes patterns or anomalies in the data that are collected 
and identifies indicators that either directly or indirectly identify components that are at risk of failure. So essentially the car uh, via this technology, uh, via sensors, I should say, on uh, any of these components starts to analyze whenever something happens that is different from the norm and flags it and tries to identify what can be done, what the issue is and what needs to be done to fix it. Uh, predictive maintenance has been lauded as a game changer for several years, but the solutions have not quite met with expectations yet. Uh, this is where we see uh, the future really getting into actual preventative maintenance solutions instead of uh, talk around predictive maintenance solutions, similar to AI, where many of us have been talking about AI for the last few years, but we've only in the last six months to a year really seen it affect our lives. Uh, nonetheless, the, the prize of true predictive maintenance is being chased most, if not singly, by OEMs. Uh, so this predictive maintenance has the potential to enable dealerships and fleets to reduce downtime and maximize uptime. And I repeat, uh, predictive maintenance also presents an opportunity to further strengthen the customer brand loyalty. So being able to predict this maintenance not only helps the fleet manager, uh, but also strengthens the bond between the fleet and the OEM and dealer and ensures uh, regular services uh, on retainer over time, rather than just a, a single uh, connection between the OEM and dealer at the time of purchase. On the other side, in terms of technology, we see that TSPs are leveraging the power of AI and machine learning to extract the maximum potential from telematics. So AI powered telematics platforms are being developed to help businesses spot irregularities more easily with the aim of enabling fleets to operate at a greater efficiency. See here, we see an overlap. Both of these services, predictive maintenance and the use of AI and machine learning, uh, one side by OEMs, the other by TSPs, they're both focused on spotting irregularities, spotting things that are outside of the norm, and then finding the problem and the solution before it escalates. So by using AI, it's hoped that irregularity Your regular, your regular meeting with your GP, your, your doctor. You go there even when nothing is wrong, just to make sure that you catch whatever slight issue may be festering before it shows real symptoms and is a problem that can be much more difficult to fix. Uh, so AI and telematics, it provides insights without the human bias. Uh, AI can help fleets identify relationships and make correlations, such as specific drivers and specific vehicles in a specific terrain. So this leaves a lot of the guessing work out of fleet management and allows for real data-driven decisions to be made. Uh, AI-enabled telematics represents a major step towards predictive maintenance of a fleet as well. Uh, as we've said previously, we this is sort of a funny disconnect here where we see TSPs leveraging more AI and machine learning and OEMs leveraging more of the predictive maintenance side uh, sort of separately. And if either side can, can uh, bring up their offerings, then they, will, they have a lot of potential to uh, take over some market share uh, in fleet telematics. Uh, as we can see, IA, AI can identify optimal oil service data off-road vehicle based on the level of clogging and the air infiltration system. Uh, but we have not really seen TSPs uh, leverage this in the predictive maintenance field just yet. So where do we see the future of the fleet telematics landscape? Well, currently, Aftermarket TSPs are still dominating the commercial fleet telematics market. That dominance will be increasingly challenged during this decade. Uh, other players like telecom operators have now the potential to circumvent TSPs and partner directly with OEMs. Of course, being present in the entire value chain, OEMs continue to add connectivity and at marketplaces with many specialist services to their vehicles. Almost all OEMs have adapted the strategy of offering free, often time-limited telematics solutions with the purchase of a new vehicle or machine equipment. 
So this connected, autonomous, and electrified future for commercial vehicles will play into the hands of OEMs. We expect the shift to electrified powertrains, autonomy, and further connectivity will fundamentally strengthen OEMs' positions. TSPs will lose ground as OEMs become a major source of data and insights to enable fleet operators to monitor, maintain, and crucially compare their electrified products with existing fleet vehicles. As a result, we see OEM's share of telematic subscriptions will grow from 11% in 2020 to 26% in 2030. This will bring near parity to OEMs with TSPs. As well, we see this market in general growing perhaps fourfold in the next 10 years. The 2020 global fleet telematics market consisted of 45 million active subscriptions. Nearly 82% of global subscriptions are accounted for uh, by the on-road sector uh, as opposed to the uh, industrial sector. And the geographical concentration of subscriptions is dominated by Asia Pacific, followed by North America and Europe. We expect active global subscriptions to commercial fleet telematics to reach 170 million and represent a global market worth of 20 billion by 2030. Telematics will dominate with 93% of those revenues, while the aftermarket will represent about 70% of those revenues. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you for your presentation. Um, we are running out of time, but uh, one or the other question that I have. Um, you mentioned that OEMs are stronger when it comes to predictive maintenance expertise, mm -hmm. while TSPs are stronger when it comes to AI and machine learning capabilities to extract maximum potential for telematics. Um, do you believe that it makes sense that they would collaborate much more closely? Well, I think uh, from a service offering perspective, it would make sense. From a business perspective, I'm not sure if it would. Uh, I think that's why we've seen the resistance so far. Uh, I, I think in a perfect world for a fleet manager, there would already be a lot more cooperation. I think that would be the ideal offering here. It's just when do we get to the point where there is a financial incentive to do so? Or when do TSPs start to realize that uh, they will start to lose the market share and their best bet to retain is to partner? Okay, um, because it's also in line with one of the final conclusions that you mentioned on your last slide. Mm -hmm. If I understand correctly, you mentioned that uh, telematic service providers, they will lose ground as OEMs become a, a more mature and major source for data in the future. Does this mean that you don't see a bright future for third party telematics providers? Well, I think they're, they're going to certainly have to change their, their model. Uh, the thing that they can't fight is the ease here, the convenience. You buy a vehicle, it's already got the telematics embedded. The OEM is already offering you a solution. That's the simplest method. So I think TSPs are going to need to focus perhaps more on, on the data itself and how it's interpreted and delivered to fleet managers and less on the collection of that data. So I think... Yeah, ideally, uh, a partnership with OEMs would serve everybody best. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you also for answering the questions and stay with us because we have a couple of other interesting insights in the moments to come. Thank you, Paul Moppen. Thank, Thank you very much for your expertise. Ladies and gentlemen, we continue the program. So we heard that predictive data and fleet operations is the general topic of this first Connected Fleets expert meeting. And the uh, in our following thought leadership presentation, we will hear from Ubench. Ubench is one of our diamond partners for this session. And we have the pleasure to welcome Manuel Medinger. He is the CEO of Ubench and he has prepared a presentation 
around digitalizing your driver journey and optimizing the customer experience. Two items, of course, that are closely linked and immensely important if you want to have a seamless fleet management operations. Manuel, welcome. Welcome to this meeting. Hey, Stephen. Nice to be here. Thanks so much for the invitation. No, it's nice to have you and thank you very much for the support. Um, I hope that you are doing well. You also prepared the presentation. So indeed, we already see it on screen. Perfect. Um, the floor is yours. You have 20 minutes and at the end we can take some questions from the audience. So to the audience, if you have a common question, if you don't agree with something that Manuel is going to explain, then please submit your comment or question via the chat and we will have time after the presentation. Manuel, the floor is yours. Perfect. Thanks so much, Stephen. And it's it's great to see so many familiar faces and uh, names already on stage. It seems like Belgium is really on the forefront of these technologies, seeing Sofico, seeing also the consulting uh, presentation that we just heard from Paul and also seeing, of course, our friends from Renta. So I think all of those different elements are very much interconnected and connection is really what UBench is all about. So um, what we want to share with you today a bit is really how we connect data because we think only connected data can lead to, to information that is actually actionable then in the end. So why do we think as UBench that uh, we can add some value to that whole discussion? So who is UBench? UBench is a Belgian-based company sitting in the northern part of, of, of Belgium in Turnhout. So we are working with most of the, the major leasing companies in multiple countries in Europe, and we are managing like half a million of claims annually, and that's growing significantly actually over the years. Uh, so we are having operations in a multitude of countries. By that, we also know that there's a couple of differences in these markets, although the, the model itself is almost uh, the same. Um, there are a lot of different players, and for that, you also need to have a lot of different connections. Because what we think uh, most of the players in the market are sadly missing out on is the following. What we are thinking is, I mean, we're talking a lot about data. Um, we're also talking about predictive data today. But then coming from data to information, that is still something that probably uh, everybody can relate to. But then get from that information to knowledge to find the right insights and then to take action. That is where like most people got lost in the way, unfortunately, because the, the, the pool of data and also with like additional information, we just heard about telematics, there's also visual intelligence, a couple of other things. Um, the number of data points are significantly increasing over time. So, I mean, also with ChatGPT, it's in the end, more and more data that is coming um, from, from your different sources, but, the issue is mostly the data doesn't speak to each other, so it's not necessarily already information. But then also, what is the action that you take out of the data? So this is where Ubench uh, tries to chime in, basically. So what we are doing is we are managing the claims process end to end. So really from the FNOL, first notice of loss, to the actual invoicing and benchmarking part. And on the left hand side, what you're seeing here is really how when we come to our customers, uh, it mostly looks like you have a lot of different players in the claims process. You mostly know that as a fleet manager, you have uh, the insurance, you have the leasing company, you have the driver, you have the body shop, um, but all of them are talking different systems and all of them are not necessarily willing to change their systems to your system. So what you bench is bread and butter businesses, basically we create, and this is what you're seeing on the right hand side, a sort of ecosystem, a platform where everything is consolidated on one file. So you have real time information of all the different players. It's a communication and also workflow platform where every party knows what to do by when also. So you really um, know, well, now it's time of the body shop. Now it's time of the insurance to do their respective uh, action in that whole process. And by that, I mean, you, you increase um, driver satisfaction because the customer is actually aware what's happening. So he is informed all the way. And that's really the philosophy of UBench. 
we are thinking from the driver's end um, to make him happy or her. So the driver wants actually two things from um, because he's used to it from uh, B2C, from all the Amazons and Ball.coms of that world. Uh, he always knows what's happening and he gets his service fast. So basically what we do, we inform the customer what's happening, uh, what's wrong with this car, how long it takes, when does he get the rental car, and also um, what's the next steps. And then also we try, and that is basically the part of the process, to optimize also the key to key time. So the time from when the car is coming in to the car is going out again. And by that, you're not only saving time, but also you're saving uh, resources, meaning money. So one level deeper, and I think that is really the, the connection that we are having to that overall setting here of predictive data and fleet operations, because it's like coming from a driver's experience or driver satisfaction, it's almost inevitable that you need to optimize your operations. And how do you optimize your operations? You basically put together data in the right way, so you structure them. And I don't want to go too much into the details here, but I mean, basically, this is the process that our platform uh, accompanies. So from the very first time when an incident happens at a leasing or fleet car, basically, uh, you have the damage intake already electronically in a version that is re machine readable, basically. And then, and that's also the important uh, first step, basically, from that damage intake, you base your car distribution to the right body shop on the data that you're having. So be it telematics data that we've been hearing around the right, um, be it visual intelligence. So basically on the pictures that you're putting together, um, you already think about how much is that car damage? Is it a total loss? Is it only a scratch? Is it a structural repair? And what you're doing with our tool together with the technology providers here that we are working together with is you almost do a matchmaking between what is the damage of the car and what is the capability of the body shop because obviously the body shop also needs to be able to repair that car from a capability point of view so can he do aluminium dwelling can he repair evs but also I mean, you also would want to know how much is the body shop away. So this is, I mean, the most basic measure, but um, maybe you take the body shop that is 5K away and he can do the repair, but only in four weeks. Uh, and the body shop that is 10K away, he could do it tomorrow, uh, especially in the long lead time scenarios that we're currently having in body shops. Um, also, the availability is quite an important measure. So what we are doing is basically we are putting together the, the routing intelligence based on the client's needs, based on the data that is coming out of the incident that can come directly from the car, that can be coming from third party providers, as we heard it before, can be uh, from the, the pictures, from the visual intelligence. And there might be a lot of more data that is coming into that, but you really want to use that data, connect it, and then uh, derive actionable information from that. And that is really only the first part, right? I mean, now the car is in a body shop. What, what happens next is basically uh, there needs to be a loss adjuster. There needs to be an expert. And the expert is estimating what's the actual damage, right? So uh, you can do that with different tools. Um, I mean, you, you might know GT Estimate. You might know Autotex, Infomax, all the different tools that are actually um, structuring the intake of the damage and then um, what you're typically doing in a case where U-Bench is not available, mostly the expert, the loss adjuster, drives physically to the body shop, checks um, the, the estimate, and at one point gives an approval. That time uh, from the actual FNOL to the approval in our um, yeah, database, we have an estimate of like 20 days max, but in, in situations where you don't have U-Bench, it's more than doubled uh, partially also because I mean, there's communication errors, there's frictions, people are on vacation, it's landing in an inbox that's not there anymore. So there's a lot of um, time delays because of a lot of different stakeholders and also a lot of different uh, tools and uh, people that are involved. What we are trying to automate here is basically based on the business rules of the client is also to get the approval of uh, the repairer or the approval for the repairer from the insurance or the leasing company to, to streamline also that um, part of the process already. So 
So basically what you're having is two major steps. That's the blue ones here. So we are both optimizing, especially the routing to the body shop to avoid um, rerouting and time loss here. At the same time, we're always informing the driver what is it actually what's happening to his or her car. And then we are also optimizing the time until the car is actually allowed to be repaired from the repairer. So at the same time, and this is also what we are working with a, with a um, partner here in Belgium with, uh, we can um, assess the sustainability. So, I mean, it's a lot about repair and uh, replace ratio. It's about first and second hand parts. And there's a lot of different uh, elements that are flowing into that. So another set of data. And um, basically, then you do the repair. And then also for um, all the different players, you still need to take care about the invoicing process. Also, that is taken care of by our platform. So also in the administrative part, you can actually save a lot of time and resources here. And that, and that is the juicy part uh, where you have to cross link again to the predictive data. What we are doing then for our fleet managers, for our customers is we offer benchmarking of the existing service network. So basically, um, you can say, what's the average cost of a repair? Uh, what's the average cost of a bumper? What is the average performance of a body shop uh, versus your overall network of, I don't know, 100 body shops that you're, uh, that you're working together with in a specific country? But then it's not only about the, the um, costs, and you can drill that down to a level, um, to, to whatever level of detail you want to have it, but it's really also about the key to key tent I mentioned earlier because associated with cost of the car in a body shop is also typically the rental car, depending on um, what is it, what you have a contract with the body shop with, but it's also about um, basically opportunity costs that you're missing out on if you are not able to get that car on the road again, right? So at the same time that you are having um, the data pool, you also need to take actionable information uh, out of that to go back to any of your events that are happening and uh, take the data back and um, match make the incident to the body shop that is actually fitting to your needs. And that is very adaptable, right? So um, that is not universal for any client, for any um, country. But the, the nice thing is actually you're using the data that you're collecting on the way to optimize your project on the way. And I mean, again, as I said in the beginning, there's a lot of data points available. Not always those data points are connected and um, you need to have somebody or something that is connecting these data points. This is what you went just for. And I think we can also from a quantitative perspective really add value here. So what we are actually uh, promising and where we think we can add value, but also where I think the industry is going to is much more, not only having that part of data, but really also putting it together seeing on the left hand side a couple of our partners uh, and you, you will be hearing also from Sofico today. Um, so really you, you improve your planning and routing, you optimize the key to key time and uh, also with the data analytics that you're putting actually from the benchmarking again in the process you can uh, bit by bit in an iterative process optimize your TCO and at the same time your customer satisfaction. And then on top, and that is really what's now driving uh, leasing companies and also fleets more and more is really what the, the sustainability metrics. So what is your carbon footprint by repair, but there's also like what is the ESG metrics uh, over all of your fleet. So really what we are trying to build is a data pool on the very different dimensions. And on basis of that data pool, you take this information, you connect uh, it, and then you you take action um, to send the car to the right um, to the right body shop in the end again. So the essence is basically you have without Ubench a significant level of running costs, and then there's a couple of different categories where you will be able to save uh, resources. Um, and then, I mean, what, what you're seeing, I, I won't go too much into detail here. You, you can reduce your TCO about 70%, depending on the case of it. But uh, you also, and that is more on a qualitative level, if you look at NPS ratings from our customers, from the drivers, so the customers of our customers, actually, you can have a significant increase in uh, customer retention because your customers are happier when they know what's happening with their cars 
when they get their car back uh, quicker and when they don't need to deal with all the, the, the paperwork uh, that is in between. So um, to summarize all of that, basically, we were talking about predictive data, but predictive data, if you remember that that graph in the very beginning is not yet connected. So really you want to connect the data and you want to derive the relevant information out of it to also take action to lower your TCO uh, and also at the same time to increase your customer satisfaction. So basically where I think the industry is going is indeed um, having a lot more data coming from different sources, but the struggle will be really how to make that information or that data transferring to information useful to take your um, automation in, in processes and also to help your customers to have a more uh, successful um, process in the end. So it's, it's, it's really about putting everything together and um, structure and connect it to um, fulfill the overarching goal to make your driver happy. But for that, you also need to improve your processes. That's very quickly what Ubench is doing, where we also think that the industry is going. And um, I'm happy to take any of the questions. Um, we, by all means, could also connect after our um, presentation. And uh, yeah, happy to reach out to any of you who wants to know more than the 15 minutes, because I could talk about hours over that topic. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Manuel. Thank you for the presentation. And as you have said, if the people in the audience have questions, this is the time to submit your question. Do it via the chat. Manuel, um, can you share with us what for you is the most important data that could help predict the repair estimation during the claims process? Well, that's a different, a difficult question. I think um, the telematics data for sure will, and we heard that in the first presentation, right, um, predict a lot when it comes to the first impact, but really visual intelligence, I think, um, and there's a couple of partners that are working very closely on that, uh, is the topic where you can uh, predict the best, what's the repair cost, and then obviously you need to monitor your network in a way that it's um, yeah, uh, improving continuously. Okay. Um, you, of course, explained the uh, fantastic Ubench platform um, what are some of the planned future developments that you think need still to be done to further improve the platform for efficiency for your customers? I think it's, it's really about further connectivity to more and more partners because, I mean, we've been hearing there's a lot of OEMs now going further mm -hmm. into telematics. I think we, we are in and we are 20 years in the market, right? So we do have quite some connections already, but now with the internationalization and certain fragmentation of the market, I think the connection and the harmonization of data is really key um, to for, for further success. Mm -hmm. and a final question from my side. What are, if you look a little bit at our global ecosystem, what are for you the challenges or missed opportunities that our industry is experiencing at the moment? On a, on a global level, I think there's um, a certain lack of um, harmonization or standardization still, which I mean makes it, especially for non-captive fleet companies uh, or leasing companies, quite hard to, I mean, put a set of comparable data together, right? So it's, it's, it's really about, um, I'm not hearing you, Stephen. Ah, okay, <laughs> very good. No, it's, it's, it's really about the, the standardization of data and the, the connection between different systems. So that is, I think, the, the, the major challenge when you're putting more and more data in place. Thank you very much. Thank you for answering the questions. And once again, thank you for the support. Manuel Medinger, the CEO of Ubench and one of the two diamond partners for this session. Thank you. Thank you, Manuel. So um, next up in this session is a short panel discussion with our two Platinum partners, we are going to talk about how to secure the right data flow for fleet efficiency. And we do that with Alexander Kushino, 
He is the chief Wylan officer at Gurtam. Alexander, welcome. Hi there. Hi, so How are you doing? Doing? I'm really good. Really good. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. And very happy to meet with you. And then our second panel member is Eric Maas. He is the managing director at Renta Solutions. Good afternoon, Stephen. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Eric. Um, Eric, do you know Alexander? Uh, I, I know uh, his company, Gurtam, but I've never met Alexander directly. No. Okay. Alexander, can you confirm that you have never met with Eric? <laughs> I hope you do. Huh? <laughs> well, well that, that's not the question I'm prepared for. <laughs> but I'm, I'm really pleased to meet uh, Eric and you soon here at the panel. Okay. And uh, hopefully we can also meet later on when we organize a face-to-face -face live session around connectivity so that we can meet in person. That would be great. Um, I'm going to moderate a short panel discussion together with the both of you. And of course, if the audience has also some interesting questions for one of you or the both of you, they can submit it via the chat function. Gentlemen, thank you very much. I would like to start with a general question so that uh, the audience can better understand who you are and what your companies are doing. And um, I would like to start with Alexander. Alexander, can you tell us what Gurtam is doing and what exactly is your solution, Wylan? Okay, I, I do really like uh, how you say Gurtam. Yeah, it's, it's really Gurtam. And uh, the solution is Vialon. And ah. Vialon is, 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 it is a leading uh, fleet management platform that uh, provides uh, comprehensive solutions for optimizing fleet operations. Uh, with uh, 3.6 million vehicles connected, and the uh, petabytes of available data, we are at the forefront of the industry. And uh, we specialize in collecting and analyzing data from connected vehicles, enabling our customers to make informed decisions and improve their fleet efficiency. And our scope extends across various industries, including logistics, transportation, delivery services, and much more, including the, including very very niche solutions that are also run on the on the same platform uh, altogether mm -hmm. so it's 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 a, it's a big 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 platform and we work globally 150 countries plus uh, where we already operate through the network of partners okay perfect uh eric coming to you uh renta solutions I know it because I'm based in Belgium, but uh, there are also people in the audience that might not know uh, Renta Solutions and what you do exactly and what you can bring to the table in terms of fleet management efficiency. So what can you share about Renta Solutions? Renta Solutions is indeed a company pretty known in Belgium and Luxembourg for many years. Right? It's a company who started in 2004 uh, we will talk about telematics and predictive maintenance. I could almost say that in 2004, we already started doing that. We'll, we'll talk about it uh, more later. Uh, we have five uh, platforms uh, in the cloud, right? Uh, one which allows leasing companies and large fleet owners to buy their fleet but also to maintain their fleet. Huh? Uh, so, so everything that is to do with maintenance, repairs and tires goes uh, through our platforms, at least in Belgium and in Luxembourg, uh, but also in France. Then we have two other products. One which is the invoicing, uh, like as Eubank said, for their customers and also for fines management. Uh, imagine a large fleet, they get a lot of fines or at least their drivers uh, drive a lot of fines. We have a platform so that the fine directly goes to the driver instead of the plate holder, which saves a lot of administrative burden. Who are our clients? And I would almost say two twofold. On the one hand, we have fleet owners and eh, the, the big leasing companies, ALD, lease plan, and so on. Uh, but we also have their suppliers, Look at their dealers, the OEMs as clients, right? So we basically connect those two parties so that they can efficiently work together. 
Uh, we also have some services for short-term renters, such as Europe Car, Hertz, Avis, and so on. So we really make a distinction between long-term and short-term, and depending on what type of company you are, we have different offerings. Good. Continuing with you, Eric, um, how do you use data and make it as tangible as possible for your customers? Because we heard already from previous events that data as such has not much value. It's what you do with it and how you can create value. That is the thing where it's all about. Yes. Uh, maybe before answering the question, where do we get the data from? Eh? Because I just mentioned uh, with our one of our platforms, uh, MRT, um, we, we actually get maintenance and repair data. We get it from the OEMs directly on the one hand, right? So upfront, they tell us a certain car, this is what you can expect as far as maintenance intervals and costs associated with it. On the other hand, when the car goes to the dealer itself, then the dealer talks to our system and requests, can I do X, Y, Z on the car? And that's a second point where we get the data. So look at what our platform contains. It contains OEM data and actual live data coming from the cars. And we'll go into telematics to see how we can improve that. But for many years now, this is how we work. We have data since 2004. Uh, and what we're doing right away or right now, or what we have in place is what we call insights in that data. Manuel from Ubench talked about it. Uh, yes, we, we collect that data, of course, since many years. We're actually analyzing. We also spoke about artificial intelligence and we're looking how to increase the intelligence and to see certain patterns in all that data. But that, that's basically what we're doing today. Yeah. Okay. And you, Alexander, how are you using the data and how do you make it as tangible as possible? Is it in the same way as what Eric described or do we see it differently with Gurtam? Oh, yes, it's, it is It is a really important question, I believe, uh, how, how, how to use the data and how to make it uh, available to the customers, right? Uh, because it's it's not the, you see, the terabytes of data that they need, they need the pieces of data that can help them, right, to make the correct decisions at a certain moment of time. And for sure, at Vialon, we understand that data alone is not enough. It is crucial to translate the data into actionable insights yeah that our our customers our fleet owners that use our platform would understand and utilize to improve their fleet operations and and and, and for that for that uh, uh, we have developed a, a comprehensive approach to make data tangible for our customers firstly i, I should say that we get the data from various of sources including gps tracking different telematic devices iot sensors uh, and we, we are a software only player so we are device agnostic and it's hundreds of types of devices including uh, aftermarket devices including oems that comes into into our platforms and then we process this data using advanced analytics and the uh, visualization tools and uh, and to make the data tangible we present it in, in, in a user-friendly format, such as intuitive dashboards, reports, and interactive maps. Also, all the, all, all the data, all, all the pieces of data that uh, we have in the platform uh, available is available through APIs. So in many cases, the fleet owner would not even need to log in into the platform itself to get the data he needs. So it can be BI systems, it can be ERPs, SAP, Oracle, anything where what he uses daily and our platform takes the data from the vehicle takes the data from device and forwards it into the correct place in a in a processed way so this way uh, it, it it makes uh, the data really tangible and easier accessible for the fleet owners for the users of our platform mm -hmm. and if you look a little bit at your activities and at your operations what would you say is the biggest use case Alexander. Oh, if, if 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 talking about use case, I would say that it's 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 really all the all the business spheres where transportation is used, starting with logistics and passenger uh, transportation and the taxi services. It's it's like literally everywhere where you have fleets, where you can you have remote assets, and you want to optimize its performance. You want to have higher efficiency on that. 
So we have a network of uh, service providers who are installing devices, telematic devices, IoT devices, who would install se uh, sensors or connect telematic devices to the onboard sensors, be it a reefer, be it anything. And then uh, those TSPs that are uh, what we discussed initially, what, what Paul said initially right now, are the question of would they survive the, uh, yeah, the changes in the telematics market or not? These days, TSPs, our service providers, they play playing a crucial role, I believe, because they are right now, they are helping uh, those fleet owners to, to get the data into the correct systems and to analyze the data and uh, to assist them in making the correct uh, decisions based on that. Eric, if you look within Renta Solutions at the biggest use cases of your customers, is there something particular that you can say? Yeah, it, it's a good question. Uh, before talking about use cases, I will also have to talk about business cases, and you might come to that one later on, right? But uh, if you now focus on the use cases, um, the way we see it is that we get the data rather retroactive, right? It's when, when the car actually goes to the dealership um, and, and goes for maintenance. Would it not be nice and definitely more and more in the future to talk about proactive maintenance, right? We, we, we spoke about it uh, earlier on um, in the sense that, and definitely with electrification, you will see that cars go will go less and less to the dealer for any maintenance intervals. Even taking uh, fuel or fueling your car, today you can still enter your mileage uh, into, into, the, into the machine. Tomorrow with electrification, electric cars, you just take electricity. So I think the biggest use case is, is definitely get mileage information in a proactive way, something that will disappear uh, in, in the near future, as, as we believe, um, and definitely battery lifetime and residual value. And then I'm coming into onto the notion of business case. Um, Yes, the value is definitely there today. That, that's what we see. Um, but are, 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 are large fleet owners willing to pay for that? Huh? I mean, if you look at the prices, um, the OEMs tend to ask quite high prices for that data. Uh, we can talk maybe also hours about who's the owner of that data, right? Um, but that's maybe another topic. But yeah, there are definitely use cases, even business cases. But if you talk about a, a fleet owner of around 100K cars and you multiply that by the data price that you have to pay, yeah, the business case re becomes relatively negative, right? But I think the main business, the main, the main use cases that I see today is simply already getting the mileage from the car on a regular basis. That will help a lot on steering uh, from the asset owner, uh, from the leasing companies towards certain specific goals, i.e. making sure that the residual value stays high and the TCO stays as low as possible. Okay. Uh, Claire, Eric, if you look at your customers, you work with big fleets. Um, how can these customers increase the efficiency of their operations through connectivity? Um, as I said, connectivity from the car to their system is one element. Uh, but one thing I haven't really discussed, and this is what we're doing, based on specific data, we can start or the idea is to make a connection with the driver himself, huh? because ultimately in a long-term relationship, meaning a long-term rental company, the driver is still driving with the car. And as I said, the owner has less and less visibility on its own asset. So what we see and what we're trying to, to accomplish, and we're working on this really hard, is to actually establish a connection with the driver so we can start steering. So the insights will feed the steering module to say, driver go to that dealership based on quality on on price on distance on availability on certain parameters so we're actually using all that data to steer more and more the asset towards a direction that is as beneficial and efficient for the asset owner meaning the leasing company okay alexander if i come to you and you look a little bit at your customers and how they use data is there something that you can mention that you say, well, if they would use it in this or that way, it would even make their 
operations more efficient and more seamless than today. So what for you is, let's say, the biggest obstacle or mistake that your customers are making when using data? Oh, that's really a good question. What mistake they're making when using data? I would openly say that the biggest mistake many fleet owners are making is that they, they are not using the data which which is uh, collected, which is gathered there. Because uh, same what the uh, our today's conversation started with, the po technical possibility is, is it is already here, right? Uh, software is uh, able to collect uh, tons of data and we are able to provide all those uh, the information and analytics and insights uh, on the paper, we, pro we are able to provide it to the fleet manager. Uh, but then it is the approach that the company, either it is a fleet manager or fleet management company or a business owner, the decisions that he is able and he is willing to take based on the data that we have collected from the vehicles. Because sometimes those decisions are not, are, that would be business decisions, right? Business decisions that are powered by the, by the data that is collected through telematics. And, and sometimes telematics uh, is the tool how those uh, businesses are just, you know, you know, they're opening their eyes on what is happening with the fleets, how many idling hours they're having and uh, how drivers are behaving or, or utilizing the vehicles. But then it is the question if the business owner is really able to make any steps further to use that information, even even real time data, not predictive one. But for sure, I mean, and uh, speaking especially of uh, we alone, yeah, I do. I would say that we have that focus on small medium enterprises, and uh, and and there are several reasons for that approach. Yeah, because those companies they often have uh, unique challenges when it comes to fleet management including limited budgets and uh, smaller teams and need for cost-effective solutions quite often all in one. And uh, Vialon is designed to cater these specific requirements, providing quite affordable solutions, but that works not only with, for the bigger fleets, but for smaller, smaller players as well. But the crucial point is, once again, that's what I want to say to the companies who own fleets. You, 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 if you are getting that data, yeah, be brave enough, be strong enough yeah. to use the data. That's a very important thing. Okay. Um, Eric, how do you foresee the future of predictive data management and fleet connectivity? With what role for your company, Renta Solutions? Yeah, I, I, I think today, the way I, I get the feedback from, from, from our clients, it's a little bit too early. Right. However, if you look around, everyone's talking about telematics. Uh, I foresee that as soon as electrification gets up to speed more and more, and that's happening definitely in Belgium today, right? Mm -hmm. uh, as of the 1st of June, July, we will get new fiscal elements and so on. Um, I, I think they will come to us. And I would almost say it will come to us a little bit too late, right? I think today they're saying, where is the business case? It's always the same question. Where is the business case? As soon as the business case comes clear, and as I mentioned, with electrification, electric cars, and more, more proactive insights into your asset, it will explode. So this is why we at Renta Solutions, we are working on it today, despite that the clients say, yeah, it's maybe a little bit too early. But we're already preparing for that one, and I think everyone is getting there. Then we still have the... The the, 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 the the issue, I wouldn't say the issue, but the challenge with the OEMs. Huh? At the end of the day, it's still the OEMs that control the asset today and have the, and give you certain information and certain data. So I think we still have to look at the data ownership. But to answer to your question, Stephen, we are working on it today. Okay, good. Um, I saw you nodding and confirming uh, the answer of Eric uh, Alexander. So uh, I don't need to ask the same question to you, I presume. Oh, I, I, I'm not because, yeah, we are like uh, both the Vialon and Renta Solutions and other companies who are on the technological side of, of that uh, 
business we are on the same side and we do see the problems pretty similarly yeah the question is the uh, the answers and the tools that we provide to the customers might be a bit different but for sure the station is uh, it, it it is yeah and uh, eric supports my idea that it might be a bit too early to push that but uh, i i do i i do believe that uh, you know in 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 today's uh, landscape uh, fleet managers they often you know, they're reporting sometimes to the individuals who may have some limited knowledge about fleet operations. And uh, to, you know, to accomplish the goals effectively, they, uh, they might require access to the comprehensive and accurate data. And probably that is the place where power of predictive analytics uh, might be crucial. Yeah, that might empower fleet managers to go beyond just simply reporting what has happened, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if it happened, it's okay. But if, if you're able to forecast and communicate the potential, then the uh, outcomes uh, of certain actions uh, might be taken or not taken, yeah? And mm -hmm. uh, this level of insights uh, that might grant uh, fleet managers the ability to advocate for necessary changes in driver behavior and vehicle operations and everything. One thing, yeah. as I said, like, if driver behaves this way, we can keep it as it is because we, we do know about the driver shortage in, in Europe when we talk about the commercial vehicles, right? There is driver shortage yeah. and you cannot push them, limit them. But if you can predict them, if you can educate the drivers, if you can involve them in, in, in all this process, that might be a tool that fleet managers might be using. Okay. Uh, final question for the both of you. I'll start with uh, Alexander. What can you share about your company that most people will not know and that they will be positively surprised about. <laughs> I, I'm, I, I'm really happy to join uh, actually uh, Global Fleet events and this event, uh, uh, namely, and I don't think that there are many people who know Vialon and Gurtum, but I, what, what, what can be surprising for many of the uh, out of the audience today is that you might not know Vialona Gurtum, but you might end up using it these days. Because uh, we, we, we as a platform, we mm. provide uh, uh, our solution in, a, in custom branded mode. So there are many, and out of 3.6 million vehicles, uh, there are, I mean, they're everywhere globally. And it might be that you're already using Vialon, but you're just not aware of that. <laughs> and that might be really surprising. Okay, good. Uh, and then people will now check if they are using <laughs> your services and they will let you know for sure. Uh, yeah. Eric, also for you, what do we what don't we know about Renta solutions that probably most people will be positively surprised about? I, I think I've already mentioned that uh, I spoke about a steering module uh, trying to steer the driver to the right location. And, and, and to do that, of course, you need a digital communication with that driver. And we're working hard on, an, on a mobile app um, to, to actually communicate with the drivers and with the insights we gather from from the data, whether it's reactive or proactive eh, via telematics. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually want to make sure that the TCO and the residual value for the asset owner goes down, right? Of course, the residual value has to go up. Uh, but but basically, we're working on a mobile app to, to, to have a direct communication with ultimately who's behind the steering wheel. But because data is nice, but we mm -hmm. have if we all have civilized drivers who, who, who basically follow the rules, yeah, then everything becomes oh so predictive, right? I'm exaggerating a bit. Uh, we're trying to actually communicate, establish a communication with the driver. Okay. And when will that app be finished and launched? We will do that in phases, of course. Uh, the first version should be Q3 th this year, latest Q4. And then we have several uh, releases in that one. But we're extremely excited to launch that anytime soon. Yes. Okay. So keep us informed. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eric Maas from Renta Solutions. Alexander Kushinau of uh, Gurtam. Thank you. Thank you for answering the questions. And I wish you a nice afternoon. Thank you very much, Thank guys. You, Thank you, Steve. Bye-bye. Bye. And so we heard from Gurtam and Renta Solutions, and uh, we continue with unveiling the power of data insights. And we do that together with our uh, partner Sofico. They have a thought leadership presentation 
And I have the pleasure to invite Bart Depré, Senior Business Intelligence Consultant on stage, on virtual stage. Hello, Bart. Yes, hello, welcome. <laughs> I would say thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you yes. How are you doing? Everything fine? Yes, yes. Okay, perfect. perfect. You are going to share with us how to unveil the power of data insights and... Uh, you have a short presentation. We can take one or two questions after your presentation. Perfect. So if you are ready, I think the audience is ready and you can start sharing your expertise. Thank you very much. All right. Hey, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, webinar. Um, it was nice to see that uh, already in the previous presentations and discussions uh, that it's clear that uh, everyone is aware that we can do a lot more with the data being available. Eh? Also here, we will look at the potential that we have of, of data insights. Um, in this case, maybe some more tailored for uh, the leasing companies, but uh, for sure, they can also be interesting for fleet managers as well. And it might be nice to see that uh, in our case, we took some other subjects uh, where these data insights might bring some advantages. As already mentioned by uh, Steven, uh, my name is uh, Bart de Pre. As you can see, I'm the senior business intelligence consultant working for over five years now at Sofico. For those who don't know what Sofico is, uh, eh, you might wonder, well, we are the world leading provider of some critical software for the automotive finance, leasing, fleet and uh, mobility industry. We are serving uh, global leasing companies. Uh, we are serving the automotive OEMs and mobility providers. Uh, this year, we are existing 35 years uh, and we do uh, so, uh, we do supply our customers in uh, more than four or in at least in the four continents, uh, more than 10 offices currently. So to continue my story here, um, well, there have been quite some uh, discussions going on with our customers concerning the challenges that they are dealing with. And if we look at uh, the top investments that these leasing companies are looking into, if we look at the solutions that were identified, then we notice that it's still important to see if we can create some more advantage with the data being available. To explain this better, we've identified several potential use cases uh, where we will try to demonstrate how you could fulfill these needs. Out of these use cases, uh, there are, of course, a couple that we as a solution provider uh, can try to help in and solve. Now, uh, everyone saw my title. I'm a BI consultant. Uh, I could, of course, talk about the importance of BI platforms, uh, the charts and reports that you can get out of there. Uh, but yeah, I'd like more to talk about some other challenges where the data can be relevant. And one of them is yeah, the investment in the online transition. Uh, if we look at, this is the example, first example, which is one of the main investments that uh, the IT departments of LISCOS are currently doing. Uh, we know that uh, if we let all the magic uh, happen on those different user platforms, uh, the online platforms, then we are questioning ourselves that, yeah, how are we able to influence uh, the customers? Uh, how are we able to tune the processes there? How can we even know what is happening on those platforms? Uh, how do we keep track of the usability? How can we influence anything? And yeah, at some point from a lease cost point of view, you want to create a sales strategy. You want to adapt your sales strategy. Yeah, at which sources will you need to use there? It becomes very unclear. So some solutions, of course, for these challenges, uh, simply uh, everyone said it already, you need to personalize the customer experience. You need to make sure that your customers feel understood, that you know as a, as a lease company, that you know what your custo customers are needing at that point. 
Of course, yeah, by personalizing that customer experience, uh, we can start influencing the customers as well. Uh, we could use technologies based on data, which will make it possible to automate some routine tasks for them. Um, when these tasks are automated, some of the processes will also get simplified. So it will become possible to remove some frictions there. If you look at a first use case, uh, let's imagine that yeah, you're a sales responsible and, and all of, of the quoting for new vehicles is, is nowadays happening online on the different platforms. Yeah, then you might wonder how you are able to follow up on the numbers. Eh? For sure, you want to know if it doesn't go as expected. Eh? Yeah, you could say, what are the conversion numbers for a certain vehicle? Are you reaching the expected targets? Are the users even quoting for certain vehicles? Also, in case that yeah, a new vehicle was launched or a campaign was created, yeah, you want to follow up if the results are coming in. So lots of users might be quoting for a certain vehicle, but yeah, if they all drop out at some point, then you need to know why. Was it the residual value that was not set correctly? Is it the combination with the product range that was offered? Is it some services which are not available? Or is it simply, yeah, the business market that was targeted at that point? So there could be different reasons why the expected targets are not reached. And then, yeah, we questioned ourselves, uh, how are the sales responsible able to analyze the conversion? How are they able to optimize the process to reach those business goals? And this is, yeah, already a first topic where the data becomes important. Eh? Like said, eh, of course, you can collect data, you can build the reports about those quotes, about the conversion rates, but at some point you will need to do some analysis on your data. You need to be able to define the relevant actions and which can bring you more value to the company. So yeah, starting from the raw data, you already need to transform it into qualitative data. Eh? You need to filter out all the uh, errors in there. And then at some point, then you're able to create some insights and define the actions. And with some advanced technologies and machine learning, eh, you could already say, okay, I'll identify the outliers and see where I need to take some actions there. And this could become very important in the reasoning behind your unsuccessful quotes. Going even a step further, it can become interesting to look also at other data than just the simple facts about the quotes that we are dealing with. Adding some new data points to your already qualitative data there, eh, you can make it possible to process it in, in multiple ways then. It can even lead to some pattern detection, and you may find some connections and relationships between the different data. Or at some point, very interesting, uh, it hasn't been touched yet so far, uh, but we think that adding behavioral data to further enhance these detections can become very important. Some simple examples here as well. Uh, if a user is on your platform, uh, was he quoting? Was he trying out different vehicles? Was he comparing with uh, with competitors at that point? Eh? If you see that there are certain gaps that he is doing some quoting, but then he's off for some time, it might be the fact that he is comparing at that point. Eh? But if he comes back already for a number of time, or if you can detect that he is looking at a vehicle for some more time, it might be the point that you say, okay, here we can convince the customer to close the deal on that specific vehicle. But that's for sure, you have to know that it's also important to continually update the processes there and the data sets so that yeah, the changes in the data can quickly be detected. It's not about taking data of one month old and let your uh, machine learning process work on that. You need to constantly update it with newly created data. Some other example is about 
uh, the conversion rates, eh, where you can say, okay, if we want to anticipate on some future events here, then you need the most updated information about what is happening online or even within your own organization in relation to those business targets you need to reach. Again, here, there's no use in waiting for some monthly reports coming in with some raw numbers, as it will be simply too late. If you have the data-driven insights that are needed to understand the situation you're currently dealing with, then you can start informing your decision makers. It is then, of course, essential to start tracking the changes, if it's, yeah, hopefully expected, but also, of course, if it's unexpected, eh, so that you can continue to assess whether, yeah, your initiatives are working or if they will need some adjustments at some point. And yeah, this brings me to a second use case uh, where we also say and, and see that it's very important. It was already mentioned before, eh, enhancing the online customer experience. Um, it already popped up, as I mentioned. Eh, but yeah, if we want to go a step further when providing portals and apps to your drivers, to your fleet managers, then yeah, building a better customer experience is an investment that clearly creates an advantage here. And this starts with understanding the customer and his needs. In the past, yeah, you could do this, of course, by asking questions during a phone call or through mail as a start, but if everything is happening online, it is no longer the case. You don't have any contacts uh, in, in real life anymore with your uh, fleet managers or with your uh, drivers himself. So again, this is the moment where you need to start collecting data, start analyzing it, learn from it, and finally be able to react better on some uh, different situations here. Because yeah, without knowing your customer or potential customer, it's simply not possible yeah, to grab him by the hands, let's say, and, and keep him on your platform. And again, when starting collecting the data, you're able to do something with it. Eh? Again, some simple, simple examples here. Eh? Let's say that you're dealing with a, a driver from a fleet customer, and you know that he has a known budget plan or he has some vehicle restrictions in, in his car policy. Then what's the use of proposing vehicles which are out of range in, in any way, eh? being too expensive or, or not allowed at some point? Also, yeah, if you can detect that you have someone looking at an SUV uh, because he needs a big trunk, or if you're looking at an electric vehicle with a long battery range, then you don't want to bother him with, with pushing towards some stock vehicles that you're currently promoting because they might have complete other specifications. It will not be of any interest to your uh, user at that point. And also with the electrification process and, and a lot of new makes, models coming into the market, uh, even from uh, Asian brands, People are having difficulties in knowing what is available and, and even more, it's becoming very difficult to compare those vehicles. So it is very difficult to know what is the best option depending on their needs. So if we want to enhance the customer experience, for example, eh, during the, the selection of a new vehicle, then we could say, okay, eh, why don't we propose some, uh, why don't we propose some alternatives uh, that he is looking into? Eh? So again, with some data-driven insights, with some machine learning models, the system might even detect uh, regular or alternative vehicles uh, in relation to the one that he just has selected here. It might even be possible to make some suggestions that the user is really convinced at, uh, at, at the right spot. So we can really make him happy. And that recommender, of course, 
might show some alternative vehicles, but it can also inform users about new vehicles on the market and even push them towards vehicles that you want them to take uh, to reach your business targets. So also here, a second use case where we think that yeah, data-driven insights might lead to an advantage. And then as a last example, something completely dif different is, uh, but also a pretty big attention point for uh, leasing companies is yeah, the staff retention in this yeah, current cost of living crisis, as it is being called uh, with employees, uh, a lot of uh, changing jobs, looking for uh, things elsewhere. And also here, we noticed that there were quite some challenges to deal with. Uh, for example, how do you make sure that there is a clear career development plan ready for those employees? How do we make sure that the employees are able to deal with all the changes happening on the markets, not only with the electrification process going on, but also yeah, with the new businesses, new processes they might need to learn? How can we make sure that you're able that uh, employees can provide the best possible customer service, uh, which again has also a link with that customer experience I just mentioned before. In this case, it's not only about getting those new employees up to speed as quick as possible, but yeah, also making sure they can make their impacts in this high amending area of digitization currently going on. Eh? It will make their job appealing a lot better. And if we look at the current training programs where new employees, yeah, they need to learn with the complex matter in the leasing business. Uh, but we see that they know their way pretty quickly in the different areas, I would say. Uh, we have seen here in, in sales, but also in contract management or in maintenance. But of course, currently, these are still mainly some administrative processes and they are not able to have much impact there. And also, yeah, without much guidance of, of some experienced users, it's not easy to give good support to their contacts, uh, being the fleet managers or the drivers. So yeah, your staff, your staff sorry, might quickly feel lost here. But again, with your data being available, uh, we should think that, yeah, why not bring it to the staff in some way uh, so that they don't need to search for it themselves. It can make sure that all the users being yeah, newcomers or even experienced users have access to the same kind of information. And using that data, making some data insights, making some uh, situations or, or helping in some situations where the user might need some support, it, it will uh, help them in making their decisions. So again, using some machine learning models, we could, for example, suggest actions to the users based on, on the choices or, or based on the feedback that uh, experienced users made already in the past and combine that with some historical data. So also here, good usage of that data will make it possible to create some user decision tools. And this can, for example, help in, yeah, simplifying the takeover of some ongoing cases by employees who are not familiar with those uh, specific uh, cases and giving him the insights just in one spot will uh, guide them already. You can bring all the information together in one place, making it easier for the user. Uh, they don't need to navigate across all the different sections if they want to make conclusions at some point. And also here, this will all help in enhancing that customer experience. Uh, the issues will be resolved quickly and they will obtain good and valuable support. So also here, from our point of view, using those data-driven insights uh, can bring uh, really advantages as the new staff will be able to create a lot of value for the company and their jobs will become much more appealing. 
So, yeah. I hope that yeah, making use of some data and data-driven insights it can really show it has an impact. It can bring advantages to the current challenges of the leasing companies. So uh, I want to thank you here for listening. I hope you got some inspiration out of it. Uh, and yeah, if you want to know us better or if you want to read further on some stuff we are working on, uh, then I can point you to some more information on our websites. So thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bart. Thank you. Um, we don't have much time left. Uh, I have one important question for you. Um, okay. You are working with the biggest leasing companies. Um, yes. You are developing quite some new stuff, as you have also presented. Mm -hmm. um, the development, the features that you are bringing new to your platform, to the market. Uh, who is the initiator of innovation? Is it Sofico, who says, well, now it's time to develop this or that area or this or that feature? Or mm -hmm. is it more driven by demand from the leasing companies, from your yeah. customers? Yeah, it's it's twofold. Eh? We are, of course, a product company, so we do listen to our customers we do collect the information from them. And if we see that, okay, there is a common interest in uh, in some use cases, then we will develop them ourselves. Eh? On the other hand, it can be that customers of us, that certain leasing companies has really specific requests uh, that they really want us to, uh, to work on, eh? they really want to invest in, eh? then of course, yeah, it might be a tailored uh, solution that we built for them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. what, is, what is one area where you say, well, the leasing companies, so your customers, they can do better when it comes to data, data management, their reporting system? Yeah, currently, uh what we think is or what we are building on and, and we see as a big advantage is that on on our platform uh we can bring the decision uh, we, we can bring the decisions back to the users uh, mm -hmm. so the the support is really not on a separate platform but is really integrated on on our platform and making use of the data at that point is is bringing a is bringing an advantage and we see that, that there are a lot of use cases. I have been talking about yeah, the sales area, the customer experience. But we see that there are also a lot of information or data available in, in the remarketing sector, for example, and mm -hmm. that they are not using at this point. OK. So that is one of the or areas not what they are telling us, of course. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can understand. I can understand. Yeah. Uh, so that is one of the areas where a little bit more attention could be paid. And hopefully also you can help them and they can share with you yes, what exactly yes. they expect so that you can further optimize also your services for the industry. That's Thank what you. you're aiming for. All Thank right. you. Thank you very much, Bart. Thank, Thank you for you. your presentation, for answering the questions and uh, for the support of Sofico in this Connected Fleets expert meeting. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the final part of this first uh, Connected Fleets expert meeting. Um, at the beginning, so the first presentation by Ptolemus, we already heard some of the differences between third-party telematics uh, specialists and OEM embedded telematics. And well, uh, sometimes they work together, they collaborate, they come with a partnership that should bring uh, added value to your business. And uh, one of those recent partnerships that was signed is one between Ford, the car manufacturer, and Targa Telematics, a well-known uh, insurance uh, telematics specialist. And so um, we have invited both of them to do a joint presentation. And after that, there is some time for Q&A. So I'm going to introduce our two experts. The first one is Thomas Smith. He is the country manager UK at Targa Telematics. Thomas, 
Good afternoon. Hi, Stephen. Nice to be here. Nice to have you here in our virtual uh, room. And uh, from Ford, we have Chris Miller. He is the Data Services Partner Manager. Chris, welcome as well. Good afternoon. Thank you, Stephen. I hope that the both of you are doing well. Um, you recently signed a collaboration between Tarja and Ford. Um, I think it's the right time also in this session that you could a little bit explain why and how this collaboration and how, let's say, a telematics specialist and a car manufacturer can uh, uh, yeah, join forces and come with an extra value for the fleet community. And you prepared some slides to give us a little bit more insights. And as mentioned, if the audience has questions, we still have time for a couple of questions after the presentation. I don't know who is going to start, Thomas or Chris? Uh, I think I'll start, Stephen, if that's okay. And, that's um, perfect. Yeah, I'd like to first, just to, for people that don't know us, to make a quick introduction to Target Telematics. So uh, I think if we can uh, flick over to that slide, that'd be, that'd be great. And just one more. There we go. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, I'll just take a minute to introduce us. Um, so Target Telematics is a technology company. Uh, we're focused on leveraging data from connected vehicles to provide mobility solutions. And our customers include uh, a number of rental and leasing companies, corporate fleets, uh, insurance and financial companies. And we also have uh, solutions focused on specific industries such as construction machinery uh, and ground support equipment in airports. Uh, we were actually founded in Italy, which is the birthplace place of telematics over 20 years ago. Uh, and we've grown rapidly in recent years with uh, an international footprint across Europe now. Um, as you can see here in the last month or so, we uh, made a further acquisition of a company called Viasat, which is another company in the connected vehicle industry. And that now gives us uh, somewhere in the region over in excess of 3 million assets. Uh, and as you can see, local offices across Europe with solutions deployed for customers worldwide from America through to Australia. We have a very comprehensive suite of solutions. Uh, it includes insurance telematics, as you mentioned in your introduction, but also fleet management, which covers uh, the likes of asset management for the owner of the vehicle who's interested in preserving the value through monitoring uh, service and maintenance and, and other services like stolen vehicle recovery, uh, through to fleet optimization, so the more traditional fleet management solutions looking for insights in vehicle uh, to allow them to be more efficient. We have smart mobility solutions, which feature end-to-end -end solutions that we can deliver for things like car sharing and car pooling, including for keyless access, uh, and our open mobility platform, which is a scalable platform, enabling our customers to rapidly configure and deploy mobility solutions, uh, building on Targa's ex extensive know-how uh, to enable our customers to bring products to market very quickly. Um, Targa is device agnostic in terms of the way that we consume data, both from uh, aftermarket devices and from OEM data streams. Uh, and to this point, it leads us back to our partnership with Ford uh, and probably is a good time for me to hand over to Chris uh, for him to explain a bit about Ford Pro. Thank you, Tom. Uh, so if we could have the next slide, please, Stephen. Uh, so just as an introduction into Ford Pro, and I think there's one more uh, button here to hit, Stephen. Uh, okay, the tiles are going to come up one by one. There we go. So you'll hear me talk about Ford Pro rather than Ford. Uh, in the last couple of years, Ford has rebranded itself and there's been a huge cultural shift within the business. We are no longer there to serve just vehicles out to the market. We recognize that particularly within the commercial space, there is a need for fleet managers and owners of those vehicles to draw on multiple different services. Without those services, the ownership of that vehicle becomes much more difficult. and We have to add value in each one of those areas that are relevant to the customer. So as well as the provisioning of vehicles, Ford obviously has a huge role to play within servicing and maintaining those vehicles. Ford Pro also offers fleet management to customers to allow them to get on with their business on a day-to-day -day basis. And Ford will manage that servicing, that ownership cost uh, on behalf of them. 
Finance is obviously a huge part as well. Uh, if we hit one more, Stephen. Uh, so we offer FinSimple, again, another Ford Pro service that connects customers to that particular requirement. Charging, as fleets begin to move towards EVs, we know that they need something, a platform, some software to help them with charging and electrification. And then the software where I sit. So within Ford Pro software, we offer two different applications. This is a telematics application, both through an essentials package, which is complementary and gives the fleet access to some very, very simple data points free of charge. The benefit of doing that is it draws customers into the platform, but also enables us as Ford Pro to take data off of that vehicle and push it back into other departments such as Ford Pro servicing to help meet that customer's needs. Then we offer a telematics package. So we could be sat here as competitors to Target or to any other third party or aftermarket system. So within Ford Pro telematics, yes, you'll hear us talking about uh, increasing productivity. You'll hear us talking about improving driver behavior and pushing down that total cost of ownership. But we can also lean on several uh, unique features to Ford. We can take that vehicle health data and push it back into Ford Pro servicing. And likewise, uh, we can not only take driver behavior data and present it to a fleet manager, but we can push that live back through into the vehicle to help the driver in the vehicle make those changes. But then there's a second part uh, to Ford Pro software, and that's data services. That's where this partnership that we have with Targa enables us to take that data off of a vehicle and push it to where the customer sees it as being beneficial. Ford data services allows those fleets that have got their own proprietary fleet management system or use a third party telematic service provider to take ownership of that data and make use of it. So if we go to the next slide, please. So what type of vehicle data do we use? Well, essentially it's exactly the same data that we're using within Ford Pro Telematics. There's all of that vehicle health data, that rich data that you can't really acquire from anywhere else that driving behavior data as well. We're connected to the vehicle, to the driver. We can get insights off of that vehicle that are very difficult to achieve otherwise. And also the generic vehicle data as well. And we package that up in different products and different packages, and we can serve those to our customers. And we know that organizations want to make use of connected vehicle data, but often are hindered by a number of situations. As we've already discussed, they may have quite complex internal software requirements and needs that have spent years building out their own solutions. And to take data from another source makes it very, very difficult to maintain and keep using their internal software. If we look at the range of fleets, they could have mixed fleets, older fleets, multi-brand fleets, or maybe even using off-highway machinery or HGVs that aren't as well served by traditional telematic systems. And also the complexity of changing from any telematic service provider to another is a headache that a lot of fleets don't want to have to go through. Data services, therefore, we provide via an API, the data coming off of those Ford vehicles into a partner. And if it's that partner that delivers value to the Ford customer, that's something we can all benefit from. And with that, I'll pass back to Tom. Thanks, Chris. If we could go to the next slide, please, Stephen. So Chris touched on a couple of these points, but if uh, you're looking to utilize OEM data, um, the data from the, the connected vehicle uh, already, then actually there's a few considerations that you might need to, to, to think about beforehand. So the first is about how to accommodate mixed fleets. So that can be a fleet with uh, a mixture of different uh, vehicles, you know, Ford here have connectivity, but actually it might be a number of different partners that you potentially have to work with. So. Uh, there's most, you know, most fleets tend to have, uh, you know, an element of mixed, a few different brands in there. So you have to accommodate that. Um, and some also will have uh, a mixture of different capabilities in terms of their connectivity. Some will have embedded connectivity uh, and some may not, certainly if it's older vehicles or some brands. Uh, and certainly there isn't a standardized uh, data set amongst the different brands at the moment. So there's some added complexity there, certainly for those mixed fleets. Bespoke requirements, um, you know, the, the data that comes from the, the manufacturers uh, has, uh, you know, 
uh, a mass market appeal, but there are some things that are more bespoke. For example, if you have multiple different drivers, the ability to be able to identify certain drivers using uh, some login capabilities, remote mobilization, and other features like this actually may not be provided as standard across your fleet. So it could be that uh, yeah, a telematic service provider can help you out with these other things as well. Uh, and of course, uh, data security is always a consideration. Um, so that needs to be factored in as well. If we can go to the next slide again, please, Stephen. In terms of the partnership then uh, that Ford, Pro and Targa has, uh, don't worry, this isn't going to be too technical, but uh, just to explain uh, a high level how this works and, and the data flow. So um, look, we'll, we'll start with how the data to, comes in uh, to Targa and then how it's presented. But from, from our perspective as a telematic solution provider, we start normally with the customer and their specific requirements. So we start by understanding the needs and their solution and then work backwards. But from here, looking at where the data comes in, as you can see at the bottom there, we, we ingest the telematics data through an integration that we have with Ford. Uh, and of course, we have many other integrations with other manufacturers as well. So to support those customers that do have a mixed fleet. And of course, we have many years experience dealing with aftermarket devices as well. So we have uh, yeah, a suite of different devices that we can deploy depending on the solution that's needed. Uh, and for many customers, we find that are utilizing OEM data, it's not 100% of their fleet that are served. So there may be some mixture as well of aftermarket devices that are needed for specific use cases. Then we take that data and ingest it and normalize it. And as I mentioned, um, the data that comes from different manufacturers and of course from the aftermarket device potentially comes in in different formats and different frequencies. So it has to be a telematic service provider like the Targa that has lots of experience in understanding that data, normalizing it and providing it as a standard so that actually you can benefit as a customer. You know, you need to have a standard set of data across your fleet to, for it to make sense. We have a, an analytics uh, and reporting layer of color, of course, uh, using uh, artificial intelligence to gain specific insights uh, based on our many years ex expertise in the industry. And then we can deliver that in a number of ways. Our microservices are like building blocks which come from our open mobility platform. And what this means is it means that we can deploy specific parts of solutions very quickly to customers. They might not need a whole end-to-end -end solution with every part, but they want specific sections of a solution. And this allows us to customize it very quickly for them and to deliver it rapidly. Our operated services layer really kind of falls in back with the aftermarket device uh, capabilities that we have in terms of our ability to deliver, uh, you know, if need be, uh, installation services and logistics services. But then also to apply to the OEM data as well, we provide driver assistance services through our network of 24-7 control rooms offering uh, assistance services like stolen vehicle recovery uh, and technical support for things like keyless access uh, to vehicles in corporate car sharing uh, and keyless access solutions. And then finally, we have a presentation layer. So, of course, we have uh, a suite of um, web applications and mobile applications and also other ways of transmitting data directly into the platforms of our customers through APIs and data streams. Uh, and these fall, of course, into our fleet management services and our mobility services that we provide to them. All of this is supplemented by our partner ecosystem. Uh, we work with many partners for things like fuel card integration, payment card integration, and the likes that really augment that solution and allow us to deliver a, a holistic uh, solution to our customers there. So I think we've got one final slide to go to, Stephen, if you could just move on. Fine. Um, in terms of the benefits, firstly, for us, Targa, working with a, a partner like Ford Pro. So Ford Pro take connected uh, vehicle data very seriously. They have a lot of expertise in it. Uh, and for us to be able to work with them, we're working with a partner that has uh, technical competence and reliable data. And that's very important for us because 
we ultimately need to need that level of, uh, of reliable data to pass on to our customers. It really is a partnership in terms of uh, we're often there speaking to the customers, which are Ford customers. They've bought Ford vehicles, but in terms of the solutions that they require, we're the interface for it. So we're the ones actually speaking on a, on a regular basis to them to understand what they need to help them optimize their business in terms of how they're using that fleet. And so for us, we're in the privileged position then to be able to feed back those requirements and, and, and that feedback to Ford. Um, and that helps them develop their, their kind of roadmap. So actually, if there's certain features or certain uh, things that are needed, it helps us working together with Ford to be able to influence that, to, whether that's certain enriched data that we need or, or certain additional services, uh, to be able to have that relationship is, is very important. Uh, and of course, for us, it means that we uh, we can quickly deploy solutions. So certainly if we're meeting with a customer and want to provide a, a proof of concept, um, a trial, then actually to be able to use the embedded OEM uh, device that's in the vehicle means that the time for that, we can bypass the, the maybe the operational complexity, dealing with their logistics team to be able to make uh, installations in that vehicle. So very powerful to be able to, for us, to demonstrate the value of Targa's solutions quickly to customers. And then in turn, for the customers that we deal with, the fleet uh, and mobility managers, uh, for them, the benefits are clear. That they, when using the OEM data, uh, a reduction in cost and vehicle downtime and that complexity of uh, enabling aftermarket devices to be deployed and of course that leads to a, a much faster deployment possibilities uh, when we don't have to arrange for those vehicles to potentially come off the road to enable that installation uh, it gives them full visibility of the entire fleet certainly if they're working with a, a telematics partner like ourselves that can deal with multiple uh, manufacturers and their data it means that there aren't any black spots within their their fleet where they don't see visibility um, and the other thing with OEM data, it's very flexible uh, in terms of the ability to add and to remove services. So traditionally, uh, when you go and install a telematics data, it provides a certain level of data and that's the data you get. Uh, working with uh, you know, OEM data, you can add and remove specific services uh, very easily and that's con so that makes it entirely configurable. Non-standard requirements, of course, can be covered with uh, a company like Targa that can provide aftermarket devices as well where it's needed. Uh, and it means that they get that consistent standardized data across their whole fleet. Uh, working with a partner as well, like ourselves, means that the company doesn't have to have technical expertise within the house. They're not having to make integrations and things like this. All of this is taken care of uh, and having that single provider uh, do that can be no doubt very beneficial to them so yeah all in all uh, the partnership uh, between Ford and Targa can be very good news for customers with uh, Ford vehicles in their fleet maybe amongst other brands who are looking to utilize the connected data from those vehicles to benefit their business back to you Stephen Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Chris. Interesting partnership. A few questions uh, that come to mind. Um, the first one is for Chris. Chris, who has been the in, uh, initiator of this partnership? Was it Ford or was it Targia? Uh, so in my time at Ford, I've been here about a year. I think communications have been ongoing previously. Uh, but Targa was a company that I was keen to work with because of the presence they have and the broad reach across a number of regions. Uh, but it was actually Targa who reached out directly to me uh, and helped get this one over the line. But there was certainly a desire from both parties in this case. Okay. What I would like to understand, and I think many of, uh, of uh, the participants, is will now every Ford vehicle be equipped with telematics or with connected technology and will then automatically that data that comes from that vehicle will that be streamed shared with Targa? Is uh, it so 
essentially yeah. yes from 2020 onwards virtually every vehicle coming off a ford production line will have connectivity um the customer always has the consent piece they have to effectively turn that data stream on before any data comes off that vehicle the customer has to activate it if they wish to share that data with targa uh, as a partner then they need a, a ford login which they can get quite simply from myself or from Targa to then consent the data over. But without their consent, the data goes nowhere. Okay. Um, I, I am correct that this is not an exclusive partnership. Is that correct, Thomas? Uh, correct. Yeah, from, from both sides. So it's, uh, it's certainly a strong partnership and we're working very closely together. But Ford Pro do work with other uh, telematic service providers. We're not the only company they provide data to. And likewise, from Targa, we work with other vehicle manufacturers as well. So obviously that gives us the flexibility to provide our services to mixed fleets. Uh, so yeah, it's not an exclusive partnership, but certainly one where we work very closely together. And mm -hmm. um, what is your comment on, and that is my final question for you, Thomas, what is your comment on uh, one of the insights that our first speaker, Paul Moppen, gave, where he said, well, uh, telematic service providers, um, they need to increasingly change their business model to stay in the game and to stay competitive uh, compared to the OEMs. Yeah, look, I think it's uh, the, you know, the onset of OEM connectivity will revolutionize the telematics market. I think um, at the moment, because we're going from, you know, a situation where it was just aftermarket devices, and now the introduction of this OEM connectivity, there are some uh, telematics uh, players who their business model is built around getting revenue from selling pieces of hardware. And for those companies, it will be difficult to adapt and to survive. Uh, Targa's lucky in that it's, uh, we're more of a technology company. So actually uh, for us, we really don't mind the way that we consume that data. Uh, sure, if it's needed, we can provide aftermarket devices, but our business model is not built on that. So for us, uh, very interesting to be able to work with Ford and get data from wherever needed. But yeah, for those companies that don't have that flexibility and that correct mindset, uh, for sure, it'll be a challenging uh, adaptation. Okay. And the final one for Chris. Chris, um, <laughs> we heard already that uh, sometimes the quality of the data delivered by OEM embedded telematics um, is perhaps not so good as today the aftermarket telematics data. What is your answer to that one? Uh, I can't speak for all OEMs, but I can certainly say that the data that comes off of Ford vehicles is of the highest quality. Having spent the last 10 years working in the telematics industry, I understand that telematic service providers need often quite specific sets of data to meet certain requirements. Insurance telematics is completely different from fleet management telematics. And what Ford needs to do, you talked about changing business models earlier. Ford, as we grow out, need to recognize that the different solutions, we need different data packets. So again, if we're providing data at 30 seconds for basic telematics, fantastic. We know that we might need one hertz or 40 hertz, 50 hertz data samples to meet insurance telematics. They're completely different. But in terms of quality, the quality is certainly there from Ford. Mm -hmm. And will your data, and that is my final question, will your data over time become uh, free of charge? There are free of charge elements that we give to customers at the minute uh, directly through the complementary telematics essentials package. Um, as we look at things like the Data Act that's potentially coming in later on this year, there's still a requirement to serve that out uh, with a cost to cover the cost of actually serving that data up. So in terms of what we provide into partners such as Targa, I don't ever think it will be free. But what we can do, again, is break down those data packets into data that delivers value. And if it's just two signals coming off the vehicle that gives a partner value, then that's going to be priced completely differently to 300 signals and 10,000 DTCs that we offer to another partner. It's all about delivering value to the customer at the end of the day. 
Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Chris. Thank you for the presentation. Also answering the questions. It was great having you in this first Connected Fleets expert meeting. Have a nice afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, you Stephen. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of this first session of the Connected Fleets expert meeting. I hope that you liked it. would like to thank our sponsors and our speakers. Um, our next Connected Fleets expert meeting is one about electrification, and it will be organized on the 10th of October, also in the early afternoon. So mark your calendar. The 10th of October, we have our next session of the Connected Fleets expert meeting on electrification. And then already in June, I would like to pay attention to an upcoming webinar that we organize with Fleet Europe and that together with Streamax and the topic of that webinar organized on the 13th of June at 10 a.m. in the morning, ladies and gentlemen, is about the trucking industry BSD Defense Master Series. So if you would like to know more about connectivity and technology for heavyweight vehicles, this webinar is for you on the 13th of June. Thank you very much. I hope you liked it. Uh, I liked it uh, really very well. So, and I would like to say thank you to all of you. Bye-bye.